method during the year that they just said that any vision model is a cascade of a linear plus a nonlinear model. So, will be an equation like that where we have in green the linear <coughs> part and in red the nonlinear part. And if we create this in terms of a module, it will be something like this is linear, nonlinear, linear, nonlinear, in set of blocks. But if we look at this uh, formulation, this is actually the formulation of convolutional linear networks. You have the convolutional layers and the, and the bias, which are linear. And then you have the activation layer, uh, the activation layers that are nonlinear. So we look on the we look on the literature. Uh, sorry, <coughs> yeah, yeah. We look in the literature and realize that there were not many works, and all of them just last year that were linking CNNs and visual illusions. So we thought that there was something here to to investigate. And what we try to investigate is that. What happens if we train the CNNs for vision tasks that we are used to perceive? If we do that, the visual illusions will also appear as a byproduct for the CNNs. And we train then the CNNs on three different imaging tasks that are supposed to, to happen in our visual system that are the noising, the blurring, and color constancy. And we check it if training the CNNs for this task we were able to replicate the effects of visual illusions. What we mean by replication? So it's very difficult to quantize uh, the replication, but we said that uh, CNN replicates the visual illusion <coughs> if it moves the, the output in the same sense that the human is uh, capturing the image. So for example, if something that is a dark gray appears to be darker uh, in our perception, we will be happy if the CNN goes darker on the prediction of those values. Yes. So basically, we will do that. And also, it's important that we will need to do that uh, following a image profile because it's difficult to quantize exactly the amount of this, uh, of this replication. What I mean for a profile? So basically, we will look results, for example, in this part bed or blue lines, we will see which is the <coughs> values of the image over those lines. So here is show all the visual illusions we will, we will deal with, both in uh, black and white and in its color versions. And there is a very important remark that we need to classify them in two types, which are assimilation and contrast, visual illusions. <coughs> so assimilation uh, visual illusions are those in which the value change towards the neighboring values. For example, in this one, this gray gets darker. That is what it's actually all these extra lines we have in the green. Well, contrast effects is just the opposite. Something looks uh, lighter than it is here and darker than it is here, which is the opposite of the surrounding values. This is contrast. And it's important to note that Assimilation, you will always expect to get assimilation just by running a denoising algorithm on the image, and you will always have a contrast effect in a deblurring method. But you will never have in a typical deblurring or a denoising method the opposite behavior. <coughs> so, once we have said this, let's say so. We start with a very easy architecture, just uh, 100, by, 100 by 23 input outputs, one hidden layer, a sigmoid activation uh, function and one input layer. Yes, trained on some typical databases to train the, both the, the noise and the, the blue ring. We create corrupted image with Gaussian even noise or blur. <coughs> and for color constancy, we use just a typical color constancy, computational color constant data set. And then we look what happens. So for example, if we start for the denoising Data set, and we look at this uh, at this uh, visual illusion. We can see how the output actually does what we are expecting. So here we can see that this 0.5 goes darker, and here we can see how these 0.5 values go lighter, as we are expected to see. We can see again the same proper effect in the Honshevel rings. So in the top image, it goes darker. 
and the bottom image it goes lighter as you can see in the arrow also for luminance gradient with maybe lesser than but it's happening there I'm moving to the, the blue ring net. Again, also the Honshevel rings are happening. And also the luminous gradient results are also appearing. So we can do a summary of uh, the replications in green scale, and we can see that we can replicate most of the most of the visual illusions in each of the three data sets. So the weights. Actually, the white solution in uh, in the denoising one, we can replicate it to a very very small extent. That's why we just put a a dash. But you can see that we replicate most of them. And if we move to color, we also are able to replicate most of them. So, which observation can we take from here? So it seems that CNS that are training to perform a visual task <coughs> with color natural images are able to replicate this kind of uh, visual illusions. And very importantly, the three sets, uh, the three nets show at the same time assimilation and contrast. So it's not that just you are doing the noising or you are doing the blurring that you will expect to have one of the two. In this case, both are happening in the same net, which I would think is a very important thing. The next question is what happens if we change the scale and the receptive fields of the <coughs> of the visual illusions. So when we change the scale and the receptive <coughs> fields, we see that the replications in humans and CNNs diminish, <coughs> diminishes for lower uh, frequencies. But there is an important thing that in CNNs, uh, the replication vanishes for high and low frequencies. So if you go too far away, the CNN is not able to replicate anymore. That's an important thing. And then, uh, if we look in the change on the scale of receptive fields, so it still happens at, to some point, but the relation between uh, target and target size and effective size, uh, it's far from being understood. We were not able to obtain a relation between them. So it's happening sometimes yes, sometimes not, so it's not fully defined. Then what we did is, okay, all this uh, experiment has been in a very, very simple net. What happens if we take, just for image denoising, the first uh, net that has been ever proven useful for image denoising, which was this uh, Jane and Seung. And we can see that we still replicate but in a lower level. So it seems that when you start to complicate the net, the, the uh, replication gets diminished. We add also pooling and residual connections to this, uh, to this new net. And again, as you put more things and get the net more complicated, the ability to replicate the visual illusions get diminished. We finally took what was the a set of the CNNs until some months ago. And the result was the same. We still have <coughs> some replication, as we can see, for example, here. But it's becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So which are the take-home messages? So CNNs that are trained with uh, natural image, as I said, uh, they can replicate human response to some brightness. Uh, also, they have been... Uh, which illusions are they able to replicate may depend a little on which is the training for. So if you remember on that square, there was not always failing on the same one. And uh, the change in the input or image or the architecture lead to a change in the illusions that we are able to reproduce also. And that the relation between CNN and the replication is complicated. <laughs> So, open thoughts. So, we believe that this feeling supports the idea that visual illusion can be understood as a price to pay to be efficient in our visual tasks because it was, it's also happening on the CNN. And also, for vision science, we believe that these open connections that were not for <coughs> between visual tasks and visual illusions. And the final thing is maybe if we want to obtain CNNs that better replicate 
our uh, human vision, we should aim for better replicate the visual illusions. For example, maybe if we are able to do CNNs that replicate visual illusions, they may be also more resistant, for example, to adversarial attacks, because it's something that may be related to this hardwired part of our human visual system. And that was the, my presentation.